What's going on YouTube? <laughs> We're gonna do this intro together? Uh, Keeper? Oh my gosh! I didn't know you could do that! I <laughs> spider dog, spider dog. That was great. <laughs> okay, one moment, you ready? We're gonna do this together. Yeah, together! <laughs> What's going on YouTube, mate? My name is ADC Art Attack, his name is Bob, and his name is Kiba. And he has been an absolute nightmare. And this Spider-Man would never clean his own table. So, we are back today with a brand new episode in the 10 Star Shop series with me, ADC Art Attack, and today's video is a really, really special one. Today, we are celebrating the release of Spider-Man No Way Home. Now, this is coming out before the movie releases, which I believe is on like the 17th of December, I think. And if you have not seen the movie yet, go watch it. And if you have seen the movie yet, if it's already out by the time you see this video, how was it? Now, if you are new around here, let me quickly explain what it is we do in this series. I, ADC Art Attack, take one character and attempt to draw them in 10 different styles. Now, these styles are chosen by you in the comment sections down below, so please do leave those comments on what styles you'd like me to do in the future. And yeah, I try to put my mind into the mind of that of the creator of a style and attempt to create an authentic style swap. I'm not doing a Bart Simpson with Super Saiyan hair and say, boom, 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 that's a Dragon Ball, what was that? That's not a Dragon Ball Bart. That's a that's a that's a Bart Simpson in cosplay. Yeah. Now we have actually in the past done a Spider-Man 10 style swap, which was well, if you haven't seen it, go watch it. But it was a really good video. I really enjoyed it. And we came up with a lot of unique looking styles. And I wanted to do that again. But today's one is going to be based around the Iron Spider from the movies. And so appearing on the screens right now, we have the 10 styles that I am going to be drawing the Iron Spider in here today. Now what I want you to do before today's video begins is to leave your comment down below right now which one of those styles you are looking forward to the most. Then at the end of the video, I'm going to be asking you to edit or comment underneath your comment letting me know your new favourite. Now I absolutely love when you do this. It is a great insight to me as an artist as to whether I surprise you, let you down or change your mind entirely by providing you with a style you didn't think you would like. But at the same time, it's a pretty fun game, full of broken expectations. So with that all being said, it is time to get started with today's 10 style swap drawing. I do hope you enjoyed today's video, and what I'm gonna be doing throughout this video is talking you through each of the styles, the approach I take when I try the styles, and a few tips along the way to help you creating your own style swap videos. So, let's go. Spider-Man. All right, so kicking things off with today's style swap, as we just said, we are doing the Iron Spider, particularly the Iron Spider from the movies. Now, trust me, there's a big difference. And so for this first drawing, I am literally drawing the Iron Spider. There's no difference here. I am drawing him as he appears in the movies. And the reason I'm doing that is because we need a drawing, something down on this paper as a reference that we can look back on throughout this piece and say, hey, that, that is what we're drawing. Referencing. Meh. And this drawing was actually done as part of a live stream on ADC Art Attack Live. If you have not subscribed to that channel, there will be a link down below in the description. I recommend it. It is a great place to see me do some of these drawings live and to catch up with me in general and say hi live. <laughs> so we're not going to focus on this drawing too much because there's really not much to say about it. There is the Iron Spider. Cool. I don't want to talk about it too much because it's just a copy from the movie so yay. Let's get moving on to the nine remaining style swaps. Adventure Time. So, to kick things off with the first style, we have Adventure Time. One of the most popular animated shows of all time, and a show with a very unusual style. Now, when looking at characters for reference, I try to analyze the similarities. What is a general pattern we see in all of the styles and the characters that we can break down and move over into our piece. So a couple of key things I found with this style is wavy and fluid. A couple of terms I'd attribute to Adventure Time. 
So the style swap begins by loosely matching Spider-Man and a random character from the series Adventure Time. Now usually this is done within my head, but I'm doing the first one on the paper so you can see exactly the steps that I take to create a brand new character. What I'm trying to do here is a cross blend between two of the characters. Keeping the character smooth, letting the silhouette of the character flow naturally into each twist and turn. The real challenge is to figure out the webbing. But then I realize, why complicate an already perfect system? Whether the webbing is accurate to the style or not, it's accurate to Spidey. So it will naturally work into the style as long as we have the other areas working in favor of Adventure Time. So as we begin coloring, this is an area of style swaps many treat with not enough respect. Coloring is also a style and in conjunction with the line work can truly capture the styles perfectly. But not always. Adventure Time, for example, while the coloring is important, it won't be unrecognizable should we go with any coloring style we choose. So we are very fortunate with this particular style to have freedom to color as we choose. Me. I'm going for the flat colors the show provides because super lazy. I can't say that. <laughs> Don't sweat it. Just have some fun. Finally, slap down a background or a theme to the box. This just helps to place our character in the world he's found himself in. It's not very essential, but I would always recommend a background to further enhance your style swaps. It really, really does help to complete the scene. And with that being said, here is Adventure Spidey. Spidey Adventure. Spidey time. I don't know. I absolutely love this, and I hope the Adventure Time fans like it too. Now, there were some points I mentioned during this particular style that I won't be mentioning as we move forward, so apologies for this one being longer than the others, but it is time to move forward to the next stair. Moving on. <laughs> what am I doing? Tim Burton. Swinging into round three, we have one of my favorite styles of all time. I just, I like easy things. Now, that's not to discredit this style. It's just so perfect, it works so well, all while being relatively easy if you follow the rules. That makes it, in my opinion, one of the best styles objectively. So, a couple of key words in play when I work with this style. Sickly. Creepy, cute. <laughs> no, seriously, maybe I'm just built different. But I think the character designs are sort of cute. There's something there that prevents them going full horror slash creepy. Fundamentally though, the design of the character is ultimately the same as the original Spider-Man, if you wish. But I slim the characters up, sort of reverse caricature them, adding big eyes. I just love the big eyes. Oh, and I'm coloring this one first this time. I keep inking and having to wait like two hours for drying times. Not today. So the coloring is very iconic. In fact, I put the coloring on par with the overall base design in terms of how important it is. You kind of want to get this right. Try to avoid bright, happy colors. Keep the theme down. Think sadness. Remove vibrancy as much as you can. Dilute the, the, pfft, dilute the colors if you will. We're looking to remove the life from this piece. Then, and only then, when the piece is lifeless, can we slap down some of that inking, however you wish. And in the end, we have a spider button. This one's actually kind of creepy. I really do like this one, don't get me wrong. Not my best Tim Burton one, I don't think, but it does 
Yeah. I don't know. I wish I never said that now because I've kind of beat myself up. But no, I like this. I, li- I like it. I- Moving on. I just ran away from that one. Pop art. Pop art. That is not the easiest thing to say. Pop art. Right, okay. I'm not familiar with this style. What a great way to start. <laughs> I've seen it around. I sort of understand it, but I really didn't spend much time studying this one. I shouldn't have said that. I figured that the style here was mostly based in the coloring and some effects or text pop-ups. So I went with a standard Spider-Man head without changing much. What a, <laughs> what a great description. The coloring, as we just mentioned, yeah. This is kind of the basis of the style, I feel. From what I know, it's a somewhat traditional comic style with the bright colors, very simplistic shapes and shadows. But that doesn't mean we can't have some fun, right? So rather than doing, say, a white highlight, I've opted for a green. Woo. And rather than doing a red Spidey, I went with... Nah, I went red. But the shadows, instead of going dark red, I went purple. Just a nice mess about of contrasting colors. But then it came to the inking. Yeah. Okay, so the inking is probably just as important in this style as the coloring. I noticed that as I went along, the inking amplified the vibrancy of those colors and separated Spidey from the background prominently. This really brought the piece to a whole. In the end, yeah. Pop art. Nice. Or not. Moving on. The Muppets. Now who doesn't know the Muppets? Such an iconic creation, but I haven't seen anything Muppet related since I was a kid. So tackling this style, well, I know what a Muppet is. Spoiler, they're puppets. <gasps> so I just have to make a puppet Spider-Man, right? Now laying the foundations of this design weren't challenging, but I tried to think of functionality. Is that a word? Would this design work as a Muppet? Could it be moved? I don't mean moved like emotionally, I mean like... Uh, you know what I mean. This was tricky. So I included the hand insert to amplify the style's effectiveness. Now, this is a little cheeky, as it forces the viewer to identify with this style, but I don't really have a good excuse, actually. Sometimes it's nice to add little features or little touches to one of these style swaps to really amplify that effect because it's quite difficult to make the style itself speak for itself. Yeah. Moving on to the coloring. This was easily the most difficult part. It's unlike the previous styles where I had freedom to do as I pleased. This is realism. This is a puppet. And that means there are so many factors to consider that it's easy to make errors, so I'm not even going to attempt full-on realism. I'm definitely not that skilled, and that's a lot of pressure. I instead chose to find a middle ground. Hard to explain, but essentially the greatest difference is I reduced the highlights and shadows. I just wasn't prepared to overthink, and honestly, it was a great decision because... Yeah, that's a Muppet. I, you know, I like that. This, finally, I like this one. This one, I think this looks great. I think I nailed this. I think that is a Muppet. That looks like a puppet Spider-Man. Right? Somebody agree. It's like, yeah, it looks good, right? I'm happy with that one. Yeah. Moving on. Oh, oh, the next one's really, okay, you're going to like the next one. Get ready for this. Kiba. Now I know this is the style you voted for as your most anticipated. Right? That was a little aggressive. Well, as we saw in the intro, Kiba is my dog, and he is a super cute and fun puppy. I've been working behind the scenes on a coloring book and a plushie of Kiba set to release soon, but in the process, I designed a cartoon slash comic book version of Kiba, which is what I'm using for today's style. Now then, for reference, we have Kiba. Kiba is a mixed breed, and I get this question a lot. His mother is a Border Collie, and his father is a Hutzer Fox. A rare German breed specific to the region of Hutz in Germany, and a Fox because they resemble foxes. Wow. 
His spider sona is cute. I had him unmasked because nobody can cover that cute face. His logo is, of course, his footprint. And his powers, well, he's Kiba. He writes his own. That's just lazy. <laughs> So in the design, I wanted to maintain a cartoonish style, best translated with the colouring using simple, bright colours with a basic colouring style. I want his design to mirror his personality of excitement, energy and happiness. And I think we did. I was most excited for this one, it's the most personal to me, it's the most original and it's something I've made. I mean, I've kind of made them all here today. Technically they're all original. But this is Kiba. Cartoon Kiba. I really do hope everyone likes this one. I, it's just special to me. You know, this is a really personal one. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts on this one. I like it. Moving on. The Walking Dead. Well, possibly my favorite TV show, but I won't be using the show for reference today. No, today I will take a more graphic novel approach, similar to the comics, but not directly the same. Originally, I had planned this style to be a horror style, but upon watching the show for the... Ooh, I don't know. My eighth time? I felt inspired. Zombies are cool. This is a fact. And making something a zombie? It's doubly cool. So the direction here is, well, deaf and rotting. And what a better way to showcase this than removing an arm or two and a jaw. I don't, I don't, I, I, I don't really know what I'm doing. Inkin! Aha! I love it. So graphic novel was the inspiration here, which means a lot of black ink, which I love to use. So I really feel comfortable in this style of inking. But I can't place too much down just yet. I still need to color, then assess it if I have enough ink or not. And if I do that now, the coloring will smudge. I don't want that. Or maybe I do. That might look good. Eh. Color time. Now, as I said, I'm approaching this as you would a graphic novel. So that's going to mean bright colors with some shadows. I don't know, hard to explain. But a key thing is to keep that vibrancy and allow natural, smooth shade transitions. We already have that black ink down. Well, we may add more, but as of right now, we don't need to worry about shading up to the ink. You don't need to go super dark with the shading right up until the black, which is nice. Less stress. I couldn't not add blood, right? All in all, this one came out awesome. I adore it. Whether it's The Walking Dead accurate, that's debatable. But so far, this is by far my favorite. Moo, ooh, ooh, Vin on. Cha. Lego. I threw this one in because, hang on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I did this one last time. Whoops. Well, this one's an iron spider. It's different. Same, same, but different. <laughs> so, well, this style is Lego. We all know what Lego is. Converting the character into this style isn't actually too difficult. The Lego foundations are already there. The characters they develop follow a design pattern. So it's just about turning our little Lego dude into a little Lego spider dude. And I really wish there was more I could explain with this one, but once you nail that base Lego design, it's literally a cosmetic overlay. You take attributes from your character and layer them over this one. Of course, the level in which you do this is entirely up to you. I limit myself to a basic idea, simplifying some aspects all while restricting the design to the front. As for the colouring, this is shiny plastic. So in order to achieve that aesthetic, we need reflections, highlights and smoothness. So that's probably not going to work out. Look, it's difficult. I don't find it easy. It's sort of realism again. So rather than stressing over it, 
I pick a light source that won't force me to apply any more highlights or shadows than I feel comfortable with. Meaning, I can focus on laying down the colors smoothly without having to worry about how the light may play a part here. It's a little bit of a shortcut, but the end result is still the same effect. It doesn't matter if I'm adding multiple layers of reflections or shadows, or just one. It's still gonna look like Lego in the end. So, yeah. Yeah, this one actually came out really, wow. It looks like Lego. I'm getting good at that, aren't I? I'm, I'm you know, liking that one. Hang on a minute, I'm not supposed to be praising my artwork. What, what? I, I never like my stuff. This is, I'm, I'm doing pretty good today. Woohoo. <laughs> Arcane. All right, this is the big one. I know based on the hype and the post I made to the YouTube community, this is likely the most anticipated style. Well, what you're watching here is a sped up time lapse of the drawing. What you are not seeing are the hours and hours of planning that went into this one. I studied this style for over seven hours, and the style isn't actually difficult. But there are no examples of characters close enough to Spider-Man to fully grasp it. So I had to create and draw and redraw many times to figure out how to get this style on a masked character like Spidey without moving too far away from him. The design I came up with, I am most proud of here today. The base drawing is not too dissimilar from just a standard Spider-Man with a few changes. But what I found out and what makes this style is mostly in the coloring. In fact, I'd place the importance of this style's coloring at about 90%. That is how effective I believe it to be. So then, I can't ink because the characters don't tend to have inked lines. So coloring is a long and careful process, one with key highlights positioned in strategic places, such as, and if not the most important, under the eyes. Allowing the gradients to shift in a natural and soft way is also very important. You don't want very hard lines between your tones. This proves difficult if you don't have a wide range of tones in a particular color. Fortunately, I have a few reds, so it isn't too difficult, but boy, this style is 100% best suited to digital. Essentially, that is what's happening here. I'm making a digital drawing out of pens. That is no easy feat. Throughout this episode, I've taken shortcuts to achieve results. This one, I couldn't. I had to work harder, and I think it paid off. This drawing is, in my opinion, amazing. Perhaps not completely accurate to Arcane, but I tell ya, after the hours of studying, the hours and hours of work, this looks great. Moving on. Portrait. Well, well, well. I'm gonna start this one with the same statement I have always made. I am not a portrait artist, as you will see. But I enjoy doing them. Now, previously, we did Tobey Maguire, whom many argue to be the best Spider-Man. Of course, this debate will have no conclusion, and today I won't be drawing Tobey. Or asking you the question, who do you think is the best Spider-Man? Because nobody is going to agree. I'm also not going to be mentioning who I'm drawing just yet. I'm going to let you figure that one out as we go. Now, I tackle portraits as I would a character drawing. I don't consider them a strength of mine, so I have little to no pressure because I just don't care. I only include this style in these videos because I like to draw them. I also always recommend freestyling portraits. I know professionals trace the outlines, 
but I don't see the point. I'd rather do a complete drawing myself. That said, the reason most do trace the outlines and the features is because a portrait is one of the most challenging things to draw and present to someone. Humans see and recognize faces. We are absolutely amazing at noticing imperfections, particularly around the human eye. So, oh, I'm drawing Tom Holland, by the way. <laughs> anyway, eyes. So, yeah, I messed up. I didn't actually know what was wrong with this drawing for some time. Eventually, I noticed the eyes were way too low, so I moved them. Honestly, this style was so fun, and it's actually the one style I keep the camera in one place for. This is so that I don't have to keep stopping and moving the devices, I can watch or listen to something and draw in peace. I mean, let's face it, portraits, especially when recording, being unable to look directly over the piece, they're very challenging. So I like to just remove any annoyance I can and relax. So there you have it everyone, here are the results of today's Iron Spider 10 style swap. What do you think about it? Do you like it? Do you love it? Let me know in a comment down below. I gotta say, looking at this one, I think this is one of our strongest episodes ever. We did so many styles here today, so many different styles, and many of these did pose a bit of a problem, but I think I did pretty well on each one of them today. Which is... rare. However, if you remember, at the beginning of this video, I asked you to leave a comment letting me know which one of these styles you were looking forward to the most. Well now, the time has come for you to edit or comment underneath your comment letting me know which one is your new favourite. Now I'm sure many of you want to know what is my favourite. The guy who did this, the person who drew all of these styles, which one do you like the most? Well that's like picking my favourite child, right? I mean, is that... No, I can do it. I can do it. This is one of the most difficult ones that I've had to choose from because I really do like all, almost all of them. I'm not going to tell you which one I'm a little bit meh about, but if you watch the video, you may know. But I think I have two winners. One of those winners being an objectively the best one, and the other one being which one is my favorite. So I'm going to start with the objectively best one, and I think the one that is the most like the style it is supposed to be, has to be Lego. I really think that that one is the most perfect. It is the one most accurate to the style it is supposed to be. But my most favorite one here today, it's gotta be Arcane. I mean, that just looks, even if it's not accurate to the style, I think this one looks absolutely amazing as a standalone character. I love it, I hope you love it, and I hope you Enjoy today's video, I guess. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna go now. Um, have a good day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.